what a song to start with. Welcome to you all today, to this lovely space here at Rosebank, as we join to remember and give thanks for the life of Malcolm James Watt, or as he was generally and of course affectionately more often known as Mal. And of course today we also remember with love Mal's treasured partner Sam. What a team they made, living all of life's adventures together and now together in spirit. A man and woman who have gone from this world far too soon, but who have left behind a lasting legacy of love and friendship. Before I continue, can I please just remind you to have your mobile phones turned off or switched to silent, thank you. My name is Anne Allison and I'm honoured to be here today as I lead you through Mal's memorial service. I do have just a slight connection with the Watt family, so I too am saddened to hear of the passing of Mal and Sam, and I send my deepest, deepest condolences to their families and those who love them dearly. There's a saying that says, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. I didn't personally know Mal, but I certainly came to feel a sense of the fun-loving and spirited man that he was. And I know that that quote most definitely applies to him in the way that he touched the lives of others. Mal and Sam's sudden and tragic death serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and reminds us that above all else, it's relationships that truly matter. Mal and Sam continually demonstrated this throughout their lives in their relationships with each other, their family, their beloved dog Tess, their community, their passion in combined interests and in their love of the natural beauty in the world around them. Today our hearts and thoughts especially go out to Mal's father Andrew and his partner Dorothy, his brother Dave and his partner Karen, his sister Judy, his brother Jeff and his wife Chris, his treasured nieces and nephews Ashley, Emma, Kelly, Matthew, Nathan, Morgan and Olivia, I know he was a very much loved uncle, and to Sam's parents Terry and Lynn and her brother Darren and his children Sade and Lumi. And not forgetting of course the place that they held in the hearts of many other family members and friends. Mal's family would like to express their sincere thanks for the condolences and support that has been offered by so many during this difficult time. And Mal's father, Andrew, would especially like to thank his son, David, and his partner, Karen. And I'd like to read these words that are specifically from him. The family would like to sincerely thank David for what he has done in representing the family in Western Australia and also for organising this memorial service today to honour Malcolm and Sam. Thank you, Andrew. And Dave and Karen, we know that you wouldn't have it any other way, of course, but I'm sure that there are many people who genuinely wish to convey their deep gratitude. Well, there are many people, of course, who unfortunately couldn't attend in person today, particularly a large number of close friends in Exmouth, Western Australia, and Sam's brother, Darren, in Finland. However, we are thankful for the wonders of modern technology with today's service being live streamed for people wishing to take part and we warmly welcome our live stream viewers. After today's service, Mal's family invite you to stay on here at Rosebank for refreshments where you'll have a nice opportunity to catch up over a cuppa or maybe something a little bit stronger. I'm thinking that a few of you might be wanting that. Um, so at the conclusion of the service, if you can please make your way perhaps outside just for a little while, it's such a beautiful day, or just to the rear of the room so that we can allow staff the opportunity to quickly clear away some of these chairs. Well, before we continue, we're going to take these next few minutes to listen to this most lovely song, during which I'll invite family members to come forward to place a rose around Mel and Sam's ashes here. We acknowledge that the roses represent life, beauty, and love, all beautiful qualities that went hand in hand with Mal and Sam. And I also like to think that the roses are symbolic of the joy that Mal and Sam brought to the lives of others and serve as a reminder of their everlasting love. Thank you.
Come away with me in the night. Come away with me, and I will write you a song. Come away with me. Come away where they can't tempt us with their lies. And I want to walk with you on a cloudy day in fields where the yellow grass grows knee high. So won't you try? Come away with me, and we'll kiss on a mountain top. Come away with me, and I'll never stop loving. Thank you. Well, I now welcome forward Mal's niece Morgan, who has a very poignant reading for us today, written by Linda Ellis, and it's titled The Dash. Thanks. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. It matters how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and to show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? Thank you. I'm sure you all agree that's such a meaningful reading and one that absolutely relates to Mel and Sam. 
It's hard to express our feelings today to find any kind of possible adjective to describe how we feel at the sudden and tragic loss of Mal and Sam when they left this life on the 3rd of March. Three that come to mind are gutted, shattered and heartbroken. And while we give thanks for Mal's life and the way he touched your lives, we also acknowledge and grieve over the traumatic shock of his death. And we also grieve over the plans, hopes and dreams that will not be fulfilled in this life of which many of you would have played a part. But let's do our best to put aside the sadness for a while as we remember and celebrate the absolutely great character that Mal was. A man who was admired and loved by so many and who naturally gravitated towards others with his never-ending sense of fun, his positive attitude and his love of life. A man who took calculated risks, living his life with courage and a determination to live life to the full, as you'll soon be reminded of in some of the following tributes and images of his and Sam's life. And especially to Mal's family, I hope that joining together today will, in some small way, provide you with comfort and strength as you face a future without Mal and Sam. I'm sure you can all feel this huge community embrace and the understanding that there is support from so many people. Well, I now would now like to welcome Mal's longtime friend, Darren, with his tribute and some memories of the early days. Thanks, Darren. I first met Mal in Year 7, where a solid friendship started to form. Within a couple of years, there was a group of us getting together for regular card games, riding to someone's house with a six-pack in tow, ready to solve all the problems of a teenager. Mel always being the centre of attention, winding one of us up with his practical jokes and nitpicking, trying to cause a bit of mayhem, all in jest, of course. Mel started his apprenticeship as a mechanic and developed a love for cars. The first one being a brown charger and then moving on to the Sandman panel van, which he affectionately named the Tiger. He was certainly popular with the ladies, breaking a few hearts along the way. At times giving me some tips, although I think he may have been giving me a bum steer to keep them for himself, as the luck certainly wasn't there. Mel loved the party. And as mentioned, bef mentioned before, en enjoyed being the centre of attention and loved dressing up, which reminds me of possibly one of his first dress-up appearances at a football club where we decided to go as the Pointer Sisters, possibly not appropriate today. With Mel, Gavin Morris and myself having a couple of rehearsals, it was inevitable Mel would take the lead, being the best dancer and the most seductive. We hit the stage with an overwhelming response from the audience, which took our first prize of two or three beers from the bar. Pretty prestigious. Another night where I'm sure Mel was the architect, him and about six or seven of the boys decided to drop their pants in the middle of a dance floor at an event. I didn't think this would happen at my wedding reception. <laughs> he was always joking around being the life of the party. We soon knew Mel had met his match in Sam and what a match it was. They were both wonderful, generous hosts of impromptu gatherings. Always together, enjoying themselves, it was the perfect match. We loved Sam as much as we loved Mel and theirs was a love of adventure and fun but always together. I've been lucky enough to visit Mel and Sam in Exmouth on a couple of occasions. After visiting and listening to Mel on the phone, it was extremely apparent he loved his new backyard and all it had to offer, including fishing, surfing, kite surfing, snorkeling and more. My last trip over, we took off to the beach camping for a few days, enjoyed sitting around catching up on what was going on and having a laugh as usual. Mel one evening says, let's catch a shark. So then he baits up this oversized hook, probably about this big, jumps in the boat, goes out about 300 metres and drops it overboard. 
We then carried on having a few beers, eventually starting to head off to bed, forgetting about the rod. Suddenly the bell goes off, and next thing you know, Mel is running up and down the beach trying to pull in the shark. Eventually the line snaps. After all the excitement, I then asked Mel, I said, mate, what happens when you get it in? Which he responded, that's when the fun starts, you've got to get the hook out. Over the last few weeks, I've been reminiscing about the time we and other mates have spent together. I feel so incredibly fortunate to have shared so many fantastic times with my great mate Mel. He always had a positive attitude, enjoying life to the max, laughing, joking around, pretty much just having fun. Even though we lived across the country from each other and only caught up every now and again, when you did, you just give each other a big hug and carried on like it was yesterday. Sorry. At the same time, I'm also saddened to think of the missed opportunities of catch-ups that we would have had over the next 10, 20, 30 years. I'm going to miss you, mate. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Well, we're now going to watch a moving tribute from some of Mal and Sam's ex-mouth friends. Thank you. Firstly, deepest sympathies and commiserations to Mal and Sam's friends and family. And we've gathered here to uh, send you love and respect and they're passing. I'm Shano. I'm Jamie. I'm Scott. I'm Rowan. And I'm Macca. Mal Watt was by far our favourite person to go fishing with, surfing, kiting, all round having a good time with. He was also by far our least favourite person to watch the footy with. He was uh, a thorn in our side and he was a tiger in, the, in an eagle's nest. Played a <laughs> But we... Uh, you had the last laugh, though. We, we will miss <laughs> you, and we will love you always. Uh, so here's to you, Mel. See you, buddy. To Mel. Mel. To Mel. Mel. See you, mate. See you, mate. Hi, all. Uh, my name's Paul. Unfortunately, I couldn't join the other ex-mouth lads in their message. Uh, my deepest sympathies and condolences to all of you guys over in Victoria. Um, Mel is an absolute legend, and, um, yeah... I'm honoured to have known him and had him as a mate. He'll be deeply missed. All the best. I don't know what Mal would have thought about all those football jerseys. Wouldn't have been impressed. <laughs> and as many of you are aware, Mal and Sam loved their football. Sam, of course, was a passionate Collingwood supporter and Mal loved Richmond. Both of them, I hear, were partial to yelling at the television when watching their team. And can you just imagine what it was like in the house when Collingwood and Richmond were playing against each other. The impact of their passing was even felt in the AFL, as evidenced in the following video. Hello everyone, um, it's Mason Corris from Collingwood Football Club. Um, I just wanted to reach out and send my deepest condolences for everyone um, that was friends and families of Sam and Mal, um, I'd heard the news and how devastating it was, and um, I hope everyone is coming together to help each other uh, mourn this loss and um, help each other get through these tough times. So I just wanna send my uh, my condolences to everyone that's involved, that's known them throughout the years, and um, from all reports, they were um, the life of the party and some amazing people. So um, hopefully you can celebrate their lives in a positive manner, and um, yeah, just wanna say, I'm sorry for your loss, and um, hopefully everyone is okay. Hi everyone, uh, firstly condolences to, um, to everyone affected, the families and friends of, of Mal and Sam. They were both uh, very much loved by the community um, and from my understanding Mal was the lifeblood of any party and also a mad Tigers man and wore his Guernsey very proudly around even the diehardest of Frio and West Coast supporters over there in WA. Uh, Mal, who I know was a mad, mad Tigers supporter, um, did it tough, 
in uh, the heartland of, uh, of Frio and West Coast. So he's done well to get through that for starters and um, and obviously seen a few more flags than those two terrible WA sides over there. So um, my condolences do go out to, to everyone. Let's ensure that we celebrate their life uh, as he would like to celebrate others. And uh, I wish you all the very best. Take care. From everyone down at Tigerland, um, condolences and... Uh, don't forget to celebrate the lives of Mal and Sam. Go Tigers. Away from Tigerland, a fighting fury, we're from Tigerland. In any weather you will see us with a grin, risking head and shin. If we're behind and never mind, we'll fight and fight and win. Away from Tigerland, we never weaken till the final siren's gone. Like the tiger of old, we're strong and Don't those photos demonstrate just how much they love their footy and how much would they have loved to have seen and heard those tributes that were just especially for them. And for those of you who aren't followers of the footy, the first video was Collingwood player Mason Cox, Jack Rewald and Richmond captain Trent Cochin featured in the second lots of tributes. Well, I'd la like to now welcome forward Mal's brother, Dave, who has his eulogy to share with us today and some other tributes. Thanks, Dave. Afternoon, everybody. Malcolm James Watt was born on Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean on the 20th of August 1969. His parents, Mary and Andrew, met on the island where Andrew was an electrician and Mary worked as a nurse at the hospital. Mal had three siblings, myself, Judy and Jeff. He was our little brother. Today, I'd like to share with you and provide you some insight into Mal's remarkable life. When Mal was just under a year old, the family returned to Australia and rented a house in Box Hill in July of 1970. We lived there for 18 months while our parents had a house built in Ringwood East and this remained the family home until Andrew moved only a few years ago. Mal was a mischievous child. One day when he was three or four, he was twisting in the curtains with Jeff uh, when they fell, smashing through the family room window and into the courtyard. And in the days prior to safety glass, they were lucky not to be seriously injured. On another occasion, Mal made an indoor cubby in the lounge room and needing a little light, he brought in some candles which set fire to the curtains. He didn't tell anyone, but Mum later found the burnt curtains and he had to fess up. And I guess we were lucky that he didn't burn the whole house down. Mal started a mechanical apprenticeship at the age of 17, working for Pierre Collette Motors in Surrey Hills. After he finished his apprenticeship, he entered a business partnership purchasing Advent Automotive, a business that he ran successfully for many years in Croydon. Mal and Sam were match made by two mutual friends, Tracy and Anthony, at the G-Bung Polo Club Hotel in Hawthorne on the 30th of September 1993. Tracy and Sam were water skiers performing together as part of the Moomba water ski show team in the early 1990s. 
Anthony and Mel went to Ringwood High together and along with Darren uh, were always out and about and enjoying each other's company. Tracy and Anthony thought Mel and Sam would be perfect together. Both were single, both had an adventurous spirit, both enjoyed themselves whenever, wherever they were and whoever they were with. What Tracy and Anthony knew was that Mel and Sam were both fiercely loyal, incredibly generous and wonderful friends. Together, Mel and Sam had all of the ingredients to be the perfect couple and they hit it off from the very first meeting. Following that, their relationship blossomed and they truly lived their lives. They travelled extensively and sought adventure wherever they could find it. Water skiing remained a passion. Lake Narakam was popular in the colder months whilst Yarrawonga every Christmas was the highlight of every year. They loved spending time on the river and Mel would always be looking for the gadget or piece of equipment to make the camp better. From using fire pumps and hot water services to build bush showers, to setting up a fully functioning spa bath on the banks of the Murray River for New Year's Eve in the year entering 2000. It never ended. Each year Mel would set up a fireworks show on the beach for New Year's Eve and people would flock around and applaud at the end. He was certainly very generous. As we've heard, Mel fancied himself as a bit of a dancer. And I remember at Judy's wedding, he was strutting his stuff on the dance floor before launching himself into the air and landing in the splits. Unfortunately, he didn't get up so quickly and his face was pale with pain. He needed help to walk back to the car and spent several weeks recuperating from a damaged hamstring. Mel played 311 games over nearly 20 years at the Heathmont Baseball Club. He was an integral part of many successful seasons, initially as a pitcher and then finding his home at first base. On and off the field, he was respected and loved. He was a committee member and also sponsored the club through his business. He was the first to arrive and the last to leave any club function. Anyone who witnessed Mel's impersonation of Cher singing Turn Back Time, wearing nothing but a seat belt at the club talent night has never forgotten it. And for that, I apologise. <laughs> Mel sold the business in 2001. He spoke of seeing people retire at 60 and not having the health or the fitness to do the things they dreamed of doing in retirement. Together, Mal and Sam decided they would retire for two years and live their dream. They bought a Goldstream camper van and set off for a tour of the East Coast, Cape York and the Centre before returning um, in their first year to camp at Yarrawonga on the river with friends and family at Christmas. The following year, they set out for the West. When they reached Ex Exmouth in the summer of 2004-2005, they thought, how could it get any better than this? And this is where they remained. So now is the time to get jobs in Exmouth and make this their new life. Sam began working at Super Value Sup Supermarket, firstly as a checkout chick, then a few weeks later behind the scenes in the office. Mel, being a mechanic, was a man in demand and was quickly scooped up by Aaron, who owned a local mechanical workshop. AML maintenance. Both working in local businesses gave them a perfect opportunity to meet and greet the new village and secure good income. With a passion for water sports, Mal and Sam were drawn to the new extreme sport of, at the, of the time, kiteboarding. This is where Mal and Sam met their first Exmouth friends. The thrill-seeking couple were Scotty's very first kiteboarding students so lots of laughs and lessons were learnt. Mel picked up the sport very easily while Sam took a little longer to learn as the harness was too big for her tiny, tiny size eight waist, though she fully excelled at walking on water. Kiteboarding was where more friendships were made and the entertainment began. They also enjoyed paddleboarding and surfing with friends. 
Sam joining the Wabiri Wahinis stand-up paddleboarding group. They purchased a block of land and built a Ross Squire kit home that was put together by Blake, Sam's uncle, and other builders, Tony and Mel. Sam and Mel helped out every weekend after working nine to five jobs on weekdays. Truly shows their drive not to do anything by halves. Within eight months, the house was close to finish and a big shed was assembled and the happy little family had moved in. Harley, their staffy, especially they rolling around on the newly rolled grass and Mel managed to fill his big shed with lots of toys. He loved toys. Come 2009, Mel began to get itchy feet. Having previously owned his own, uh, been his own boss of a successful mechanical workshop, he saw the opportunity arise in Exmouth to lease a yard with a shed in the most popular light industrial area thoroughfare. Exmouth 4x4 service and repairs was then born and was up and running very quickly. Began to get credit for the cleanest workshop in the whole of Exmouth. And those who knew, know, knew Mal will know what I mean. He was meticulous. Mal had an apprentice and himself at the beginning, though as the town grew and demand for servicing cars along with it, more staff were employed and the business flourished. Sam went out on her own as a bookkeeper, overhauling a dozen small and large local businesses, and she also gained a great reputation for efficiency and confidentiality. Between setting up their new work and home life, Sam and Mal loved camping on the beach with their new friends. They would often spend days, even weeks, camping on the beach at Winderbandy, where both could endlessly practice their kite building, kite boarding skills, or just sit back getting to know their new friends. Their boat, Calm Down, named kindly after Sam's dad, dad Terry, made for many happy sea voyages. Mal never liked to eat fish, though he did love to catch them to take home to Sam for dinner. When friends visited, Mal and Sam would take them mm. on their own private whale watching experiences. Sport with us was another passion for the couple, so their popularity grew, and so did their involvement in some local sports clubs. Barefoot bowls, high go-kart teams and cricket, everybody just wanted to invite these two to come and play. When there was no sport happening in town, watching their favourite AFL football teams on TV was a must. Mal rooted for Richmond and Sam supported Collingwood, so you can only imagine the banter when their two teams played each other or another Western Australian team. Sam screaming at the umpires had every dog in town diving for cover and Mal's fireball shots for every goal kick just got everybody smashed. <laughs> they proudly wore their team's colours any time of the year. Playing pinball on their collectible pinball machines was another hobby loved by them both. The highest score was often boasted about to the next visitor through the door. In 2016, after talking with close friend Gav, who ran the local flight business, Mal decided to become a pilot. A year and a bit later, the decision was made for a full lifestyle and career change to sell up the workshop, and Mal became a pilot. Mal became a pilot with Gav and the Bird's Eye View Ningaloo team. Exmouth 4x4 was sold, and the new career of being an aircraft pilot had begun. This saw Mal flying three years with his new team, clocking up around 1,343 hours in the sky plus the purchase of another two aircraft. During these hours flying over Ningaloo Reef, Mal had many golden moments, including a rare blue whale sighting, orcas, oceanic manta rays, and various large sharks. We were certainly jealous of the photos that he would send back home. On days off, Sam loved to go up with Mal for a fly and she also uh, backed off from working five days a week down to three and a half days. They could not be any happier with their new work-life balance decision, more time for camping and doing things they love to do. With the new lifestyle on the horizon came a new toy, the best investment they ever made, buying an off-road caravan. 
the caravan was in Canberra, so a big road trip it was in their Silverland cruiser across the Nullarbor to Adelaide, where the previous owner uh, compromised to meet them. It was everything they needed. A very happy Sam and Mal then returned to drive back to Exmouth. The adventures had begun. This caravan made for lots of memories over the next few years, including the challenges of towing into remote beaches, with Sam brush cutting her way through a track and getting bogged many a time. On days off, Sam and Mel would have their hours planned either together or off with mates surfing, paddling, spearfishing, boating, beaching or kiting. They were living their best life. When, when Andrew and Mary and Judy visited at various times, they were treated to so many once in a lifetime experiences thanks to Mal and his many toys. Mal and Sam were a great uncle and auntie to their seven nieces and nephews on my side of the family. The kids all cherished the time they spent with Mal and Sam. Not being parents themselves, they would buy presents that a parent would not. <laughs> Ju Judy recalls Mal buying an indoor trampoline for his two girls, for her two girls. Nice idea, you might think, but before long, Judy was horrified to see Mal teaching two-and-a-half-year-old Olivia how to jump off the second step of the stairs onto the tramp so she could launch herself higher into the air. It all ended well, but that's, that's just how Mal was. Hmm. Whenever Mal visited, he would, um, he would take my four kids... Ashley, Emma, Kelly and Matt off for a game of laser tag or bowling and the kids just loved it but I suspect that Mel loved it more. On one occasion Mel was in my lounge room playing bowling on the Wii in front of the new big screen TV. The kids told him that he needed to put a wrist strap on to which he replied, no, I don't need a wrist strap. He lined up for his turn, swung his arm back then forward and launched the remote control straight into the TV. So no damage was done, but I came back into the room a little later um, and the kids said, Uncle Mel's threw the remote at the TV. <laughs> he looked at me and he looked at them with that cheeky smile. Like, <laughs> uh, I thought I told you not to say anything, he said. He was such a big kid himself, and all the kids loved him for it. Mel was a big kid at heart. He loved adventure and had the courage to chase his dreams. I think there is something we can all learn from the way Mel and Sam lived their lives, and we will miss them dearly. Last week, I travelled to Exmouth um, with Karen and Stacky for a memorial service organised by Mal and Sam's many friends in Exmouth. There were in excess of 400 people present at the Yacht Club by the water for a celebration of the lives of two, of two wonderful souls. Mal and Sam were clearly loved by so many people. And I thank Exmouth for being a part of their family for the past 17 years. Thank you. The morning following the service, I was privileged, along with other family and friends, to take part in an ocean memorial arranged by Sam's Wabiri Wahini's paddleboarding group. I've since been informed that the council intends to install a memorial seat for people to sit and reflect at Woodbury Beach in honour of Mel and Sam. So thank you to everybody for showing your support to my family, especially to Karen and Stacky for their support in Exmouth and to, um, and to Andy for his help with the AV today. And I'd, I'd just like to leave you with a brief piece of vision from the Woodbury Wahines. Thanks.
gosh, that was beautiful, that footage. Thank you. I'm so glad that you showed that today. And thank you, Dave, for that wonderful insight into Mel and Sam's life. Well, from the words of Dr. Zeus, sometimes you'll never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. So let's now watch this lovely visual tribute of Mel and Sam's life with images of so many of those precious moments and memories. Thank you. feel a bit lost for words after seeing that. What an amazing and absolutely fun life they lived. And I don't know if you noticed, but one of the images of the family was actually taken here at Rosebank, another reason why this location was chosen. I know that the family enjoyed a really special catch-up here at Rosebank. Well, last Wednesday, some family and close friends 
left some of Mel and Sam in the dunes at Exmouth where they will rest for eternity, overlooking the place and being close to the people they both loved so much. See some images there. Sometime in the near future, the remainder of Sam and Mal's ashes will be spread at Yarrawonga, another place they love so much, where many happy memories were made. And in some way, it's comforting knowing that they remain together, at rest for eternity in these two locations of significance, two beautiful places in the country they so loved, where the people closest to them will be able to quietly reflect and feel their spirit. Well, it's been said that if during our lifetime we're lucky enough to know or meet just one individual who stands out for all the right reasons, then we are truly blessed. For many of you here and for those watching in, we know that Mal was one of those people. And while Mal and Sam may be gone in the physical sense, there is no mistaking that their love and precious memory will be forever held in your hearts like a bright shining star. We're truly grateful for their place in history and knowing that their memory and legacy will live on. These meaningful words that Mal's brother Dave received from a close family friend really resonated with him. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, so loved, so missed, so very dear. Thank you, everyone. If you can please be standing. Thank you. We give thanks for the life of Malcolm James Watt. And with hearts full of love and tenderness, we say goodbye as we send Mal and Sam's spirit on. And we will think of them as living in the hearts of those they touched, for nothing loved is ever lost, and they were loved so much. And you'll hear a wonderful song as we finish now. Thank you, everyone. Mr.